اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الوالي الكريم وصلى الله على انبياء اجمعين والمسيح والمحتي والمجدد لنا المرسلين are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it and that he is alone and has no partners and that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sustainer of all the boundless universes all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the generous eternal friend and send salutations of Allah on all of his prophets and his apostles and on the Messiah the anointed one and on the Mahdi the guide and on the Mujadda the reformer which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And now, the true light, featuring Es Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. Assalamu alaikum. Imam, I have a question. Um, I don't really understand. I was taught under the Christian faith that um, Jesus, when he was here on this earth, that he was here as a blood sacrifice to, to save the world of his sin. Now my question is, if he was not, was he killed? I mean, was he crucified? If he was not crucified, then were we forgiven? I'm confused. Okay, step one is in the Christian teachings, they do claim that Jesus' presence was for the removal of sin from the world. However, here we are, 19, right, 87, and tonight, when you look on the news, you hear a catastrophe of sin. So therefore, that was not complete. Here's why you know. Yes, Jesus was sent into the world to remove the world of sin and righteousness, correct? Mm -hmm. But if you open your Bible to the book of St. John's, 13:22. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting whom he spent. Now they were leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, Simon Peter. Right? Therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spent. Because Jesus spoke about someone coming. He said, lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give to sup when I have dipped it. Jesus is now telling them to look out for a man named Judas. Correct? Mm -hmm. Who they were trying to find out in this meeting who was this person, this mysterious person who Jesus said was going to deliver him for destruction. I'm saying that to say that Jesus, even up to that point, at that last supper, he thought that he was going to die. He really thought it was over. But prior to that, he gave them mention of a comforter. Let's see how it starts off in 16. These things have I spoken unto ye, that ye should not be offended. Upset, he's talking to them. I'm telling you about something so you don't be upset, Jesus said. They shall put you out of the synagogues. You see that statement there? By Jesus making that statement, he told you what religion they were following in the time that he was there. They definitely wasn't put, being put out of churches, and they can't say that's because there was no churches, because the churches is mentioned throughout the scriptures. But these people were going to synagogues, his followers. He said, they're going to put you out of the synagogue. So they were Israelites following Judaic teachings, not Christians following anything new. You see that? Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you, will think that he does Allah's service. He's saying the day is going to come that when people are starting to kill you people, his followers, they're going to think they're doing the right thing for God. That's a frightening thought. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. He separated himself from the Father again. They have not known the Father nor me. So he didn't see himself as the Father. We understand that, right? Mm -hmm. Four. But these things have I told you 
that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was not with you. I didn't tell you all these things when I first came because I wasn't in your company. Why? Because John in the books of Mark, the Baptist, had control of the congregation before Jesus came. Jesus didn't teach them about a comforter or a successor in the beginning, he said, because I wasn't in your midst. Now that I'm with you, I'll tell you, he's gone. But now I go my way to him that what? Jesus meant that he's going someplace back to some being that had sent him. And we took that word sent and brought it back to the language. We get Rasul, Rasala, an apostle. That Jesus who said, I'm going because I was an apostle, sent. Right? Mm -hmm. And none of you asked me, where the goest thou? I told you I'm going back to someone who sent me, and not one of you disciples had even asked, where are you going? He said to them, see that? Yeah. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. But because I said I'm going to die, y'all are sad. But none of y'all asked me where I was going or how I was going to die. You didn't even ask. So they went, see, he's telling you that they took the story and started fabricating their own definitions. You didn't ask me. Because if I, if I was Jesus and I said to you, I'm getting ready to go back to heaven, should you be sad or happy? Happy. That's right. If I said, I'm getting ready to get nailed on this cross, should you be sad or happy? Sad. If I said, I'm getting ready to get nailed on this cross, that you may be forgiven for your sins, should you be sad or happy? Confused. Yes. <laughs> but they're not confused, they're sad. They didn't think of him as dying for them. They didn't see that. <laughs> Watch. Now seven. Nevertheless, he said, however, even though, nevertheless, regardless, I tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. That means he lied before? No, he knows that these people would pervert the things he said. Change them. He said, let me tell you the truth. However, knowing how, how you didn't even care to ask me where I was going, however, I will tell you the truth anyway. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, which means better, for you that I go away. He told his disciples, you know, it's better for you that I go. Why? For if I go not, the comforter will not come unto you. So he made a condition here. The condition is that the comforter could not come while he was there. Question. Go ahead. So the comforter which he's talking about is Muhammad? And I'm going to show you how, I know what you're thinking. So I'll get to that, the Holy Spirit. I will show you. I can make it simple. Jesus said, if you see that spirit, test that spirit to see whether it is of God or not. And then he followed by saying, because many false prophets are gone unto the world. That's the next verse. So therefore, Jesus classified a spirit as a prophet right there. So when you see that spirit, test that prophet to see whether it is of God or not. Because many false prophets are going into the world. So he called a spirit a prophet. Okay? That's for the Christians who say it's the Holy Ghost. Right. And I say it couldn't be the Holy Ghost only because Elizabeth got the Holy Ghost before Elizabeth was John the Baptist's mother. Was filled with the Holy Ghost to give birth to John the Baptist. Refer to the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 15. And that was before Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, the Holy Ghost was here before Jesus. But Jesus tells him in this section here, in chapter 16, verse 7, if I don't go, the comforter cannot come. What does he mean by that? But, however, if I depart, if I depart, not when I depart, however, if, is a, is a question here, I depart, I will send him unto you. One prophet always foretells the coming of the next. Right? Okay. And when he, one he, is come, he, another he, will reprove the world of sin. I thought Jesus was supposed to reprove the world of sin. I see not. That's right. This comforter was the one that's going to do it. Now let's look at that. A real Muslim don't drink. Right? or smoke cigarettes or do all of the devilish things that the world makes so easy now Muhammad 
came and reproved the world of sin. He came with a doctrine that removed sin. Let's go on. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Then he tells them why. Of sin, why? Because they believe not on me. There goes your answer. Yes, he was sent into the world to remove the world of sin, but did they believe him? And that's why it was necessary for someone else to come and do the job that he did not do. Because he said, I came to my own in St. John's, but my own receiveth me not. But all those that do, they too will have the power to become the sons of the Most High. But here he has to tell them the reason why the covenant is coming to remove the world of sin. Because I was supposed to do it, but you didn't have no faith in me. He goes on. Of righteousness, because what? I go to my father. And I go to my father, and what? And you see me no more. Will they see him again? What did he say? Christians keep saying, we'll see him again. He's coming. He's coming out of all the gospel singing. Jesus is coming out the cloud. We're waiting for him. Let's sing this gospel song. Lord, come. Here we come. Where is he coming? Where is he coming? Jesus said, you ain't going to see me no more. Because he said he sent this angel signifying it. Like I read earlier. He sent this angel representing him in the books of Revelations. Stop looking for him because he's not no little, no blonde hair, blue eyed man. Ain't coming out no clouds for you. So y'all might as well stop. The slave master got you looking up so he can put his hand in your pocket. Amen. Mm. You better start looking the white man in the eye and let him know you know who you are and watch him back up. He can't stand a black person look him in the eye and try it. He got you looking down because he can't take them, them eyes of flames of fire, that pain, that sadness, that soul, that gospel that comes in your eyes when you look at him because he, he knows what he did to you. Go on. He says, of judgment, because the what? The prince of this world is judged. Because they judged him. He came to cast judgment on the world as Lord of Lord and King of Kings, and in turns got judged. <laughs> he said, Muhammad is going to pass judgment on y'all. And Muhammad came in speaking about the day of judgment. If you open the Holy Quran to the first book, Surah so Al-Fatiha, he calls Allah Maliki Yawmuddin, the day, the master of the day of judgment. Right away, he, the first thing Muhammad passed on everybody was what Jesus said he would. Judgment on the world. Go ahead. Says of judgment. Why? Because the prince of this world is judged. That was him. Not the prince of heaven. He didn't say he was the prince of heaven. He said he was the prince of... That's right. Go ahead. Now, number 12. I have yet, here's another thing. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. He said, I have more things to teach you people, however you all ain't ready for them. Now, how can you go and start a church when the preacher or the teacher is telling you he hasn't finished teaching you? He just said, I got a lot of things to teach you. So you didn't graduate, you didn't get no diploma, but you went out and formed the Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, Pentecostals, Protestant, Lutheran, and Holiest Name, and, and the Spiritual Baptist, etc., etc., etc. When the man who's the head or the prince of the university, who was supposed to be teaching you people, didn't finish teaching you, yet you set a school up unpracticed, without your degrees without your credentials, and of course, without the proper information. So how do you know what Jesus was going to say next? So how do you set the church up before he finished telling folks? The last thing he's going to say is, and therefore, I messed up and we got to start all over again. <laughs> how do you know what this is? Like a teacher's teaching you how to dance? And, all, and then you say, well, who taught you? Well, I figured this out myself. Would you stay there? No. Now, shoot, I could do this on my own. Let me get out of here. Well, I was going to somebody's school for two weeks. And you didn't finish? No. Let me get on out of here. That's what you just said. Jesus told them, I want to teach y'all many more things. However, you ain't ready for them. They just wasn't ready for what he had to teach. The spiritual transition from, from transforming them from physical beings back into an angelic state. They were fussing over what they were eating and where they were going to get sandwiches from. What clothes they would wear and where they'd get their money from. That's all in Matthew 6. He talks about that. Okay, so they couldn't have set no church up because he ain't finished. He said, however, when he, another he, the spirit of truth, that's Muhammad's name is El Amin, the truth. 
And the angel Gabriel came to Muhammad, who was the spirit of the Most High, and told Muhammad to read. And Muhammad told him, I can't read. So he couldn't have said anything of his own. Muhammad didn't teach nothing himself. Everything he's taught, the angel put in him. Because he was considered to them an ummi, one who was not qualified to quote scripture. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you. And Muhammad says, guide us to the right path in Surah Fatiha again. Guide us right there now. In the first uh, chapter of the Holy Quran, which has seven verses, he says, guide us to the right path. He will do what? Guide us to He will guide you to the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but only whatsoever shall he hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. Now, this man was to be a what? Who is a, what is a man in the Bible called who shows you things to come? A person who shows you things to come is a person that has the power of prophecy. Therefore, Jesus is saying, if, see, they mistranslate, show you things to come, means he would be a prophet. <laughs> you see that? The Holy Ghost does not come and show you things to come. He comes with the word of the Most High, and when he declares a thing, it says in the Bible, be, it is. <laughs> That's what the angel Gabriel said to Mary. Well, the Almighty just declares a thing, and it is. But prophets come and foretell what is going to happen. And Jesus described this comforter as being someone who would foretell what is going to happen. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, in Isaiah 19.26, they make mention of a prophet who's not learned. And when an angel come to him and said, read, he said, I'm not able to read. Literally, it says it. Okay? okay. Just for those who need to look it up. He shall glorify me. This prophet who would tell them of things to come is going to glorify Jesus. Do you know that Jesus is mentioned the most out of every prophet of all the history of the scriptures. Jesus' name is mentioned the most in the Quran. He's exalted as being born of a virgin, raised into heaven. He was called the Word of the Most High, the Spirit of Truth. And the illustrious in this world and in the hereafter. Now that's not glorifying a person. I don't know what it is. Muhammad glorified Jesus' name. He's in there more than Moses, Abraham, and everybody else. Okay. He shall glorify me. Why? For he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. All of you people were Jesus' disciples. You were his people. <laughs> and now you're coming over to Muhammad. You see that? But you're not coming over to Muhammad as a Mohammedan because the Mohammedans don't know how to glorify Jesus' name. You're coming to a congregation where you hear Jesus' name being mentioned and glorified because you know it's true. Muhammad received of Jesus. There's parts of the Holy Quran that are identical to that of the Injil. Word for word, in fact. I'm putting it in a book I'm working on now about the Comforter. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. He wanted to clear up that they, he wasn't trying to say that he owns everything. He was trying to say everything that my Heavenly Father owns is mine and that applies to me and you also. Everything that the Heavenly Father owns is yours. Now he was just trying to clear up so he didn't think he was on an ego trip. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to my Father. See that quote? First he tells them that after a little while, you shall not see me. And what happened is, after Jesus had his incident, it was a day and a half that they did not see Jesus. And then he appeared later in the upper room, and they saw him again. He was trying to tell them, there's going to be an incident where I'm going to disappear. I am not dead yet. I, am not, I did not go to my father as of yet. A little while and you won't see me. And if you think about that situation between the garden, 
and they're wrestling in the garden. And then Jesus is not there, not seen by disciples. And Mary Magdalene sees him. And later on in the evening, he comes in. And Dalton Thomas doesn't see him. And then eight days later, it says in the Bible, then he comes in the upper room where Thomas is there. Eight days had passed. That's the little while here. You're not going to see me. Then what does he say? And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to my Father. And then the second time they saw him after he crossed to the desert, what did Jesus do? Descended up into heaven right in front of them. And they stood there watching him go up. And two angels told him, the same way he went up is the way he will return in the latter day. These are all Bible quotes, backing themselves up. Okay? Then said some of his disciples, amongst themselves now, He's standing there talking to them. And some of them lean over to themselves and say, What is this that he said unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to my father. Here he's talking to them. They didn't turn to him and ask him what he meant. Just like black people in America. They don't come and ask. They get off to themselves right there and start saying, What the heck is he talking about? Instead of turning right to him and say, excuse me, Lord, what did you mean? They go, oh, I think he means this. Well, I thought he meant this. And then they got denominations, five percenters and splinter groups. They said, therefore, what is this that he said? They repeat the same thing. What's the meaning of a little while? We cannot tell what he said. We don't know what he means. Now, Jesus knew that they were, what? Desirous to ask him and said unto them. He knew that they wanted to ask him a question, but didn't. So he said, what? Do you inquire amongst yourselves of that I said a little while and you shall not see me and again a little while and you shall see me? Verily, verily, or truly, truly I say unto you, unto you, that ye shall not weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. He said, I'm trying to tell you that everybody's going to think that I am dead and you're going to be broken hearted and then you're going to see me again and that's what happened when he came in the upper room they were joyful when they found out that he had not died on the cross refer to the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 36 it's very simple now why don't they preach that because they don't understand it because that's my job that's why I'm here they don't understand I'm here to make these things clear so y'all can go out, I'm like the spirit of truth, it's up to y'all to take this and say, make that clear to Reverend Pork Chop or Pastor Ribs. Listen, Pastor Ribs, make this clear. You understand? And he can't do it. Saying, if you can't do it, then sit off the throne, because you're inquiring about Jesus, and he has a spokesman right on earth talking to us. He has a spokesman here preaching to us, and you're taking his words and trying to translate them your way. No, it doesn't work like that. I understand. Okay. Um, so one other thing that it kind of relates to this. So then what's the purpose of them teaching about the Holy Trinity? What's the purpose of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Okay. If there, if there's, it was, as I take it, Jesus was a prophet. He was a messenger, right? That's right. And every prophet. So why prophet, are they only acknowledging? Every prophet has the Trinity in them. Let me tell you why. Because Jesus said, our Father who art where? In heaven. That's the Father. He said, I am the Son of what? Man. Son of man. That's the Son. And the Son of God. That's the Son. And Mary shall be filled of the Holy Spirit. Ghost. And that was an angel. So every man you see who acknowledges a heavenly Father recognizes that he is the Son and can be filled of the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? They just made it out of a religion. That's their problem. Yes. They didn't turn it into a religion. All he meant was the Father, which is in heaven, the Son, which is all humanity, and the Holy Spirit, which is the angels that got us. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Trinity. The Muslims are so confused, they think the Christians are saying three different gods. Three different gods in one, instead of just listening. They listen to each other, they coordinate, they get along. But if the Muslims want to make themselves seem so intelligent, they don't really listen to what a Christian say. If you take a Christian and say, excuse me, by Father, what do you mean? 
Well, let's say the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, be in one. Great. All that's fine. It's like a cup of tea. You can have sugar, milk, and water in between oh, yeah. one. No problem. I ain't going to bother with that as long as we differentiate the different substances that make up the cup of tea, which is milk comes from one type of creature, tea comes from another, and water from something totally different or sugar. Now, when you say Father, Reverend, what do you mean? I don't want to hear your interpretation, I want to hear your meaning, which you're supposed to have gotten from the word of the Holy Spirit, because they just open your mouth and the Holy Spirit will put his words into it. I want you to tell me by Father Rev, what do you mean? Jesus said, my Father, I am not greater than he. I just quoted him saying those who rejected my Father in St. John chapter 14 and 15. My Father. So he separated himself from the Father and the Holy Spirit. If he's going to send it, can't be him. If it's going to be here when he's not here, it can't be him, the way you see it. So therefore, the angels are the spirits, the Holy Spirits, and of course, there's unholy spirits that are spiritually driving these Christian Pentecostal churches, and these people think they're being touched by our Holy Spirits, and they're being touched by unholy spirits. No Holy Spirit is going to take no old women and pick her up out of her seat and throw her on the floor. <laughs> no Holy Spirit is going to dirty your clean white dress. And knock you out. Okay. And knock you on the floor and have you foaming out your mouth. That ain't no Holy Spirit. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Um, did Jesus accomplish what he was sent here for? Unfortunately, no. Because if he did, the book of St. John, chapter 14, and of course 15, let's read it and see what happens. He said, now Jesus, now notice what he said. Number one, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. If it wasn't true, I would have told you. People say, if it was not true, I wouldn't have told you. They say it backwards. Mm -hmm. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, which is mentioned in Revelation chapter 21. The Lamb returns. And where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know. And the way, you know. Where I'm going, you know. And how I'm going to leave, you already know. What did Thomas say? Lord, we know, we know not whether thou goest. Jesus just told them what? They didn't know. What did they just say? They didn't know. Now, here to them, according to Christians, this is God telling them, you know what I'm getting ready to do, right? You do know. And then they say, no, we don't know. <laughs> He's showing them something. He's saying, in all that he taught them, in all the years he was here, they should know. You follow? Watch it. It goes on. And how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. See, that means they didn't understand his teachings at all. They said, how should we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now people say, see, that means everybody got to go through Jesus. Yeah, everybody in his time who he was sent to, Otherwise, he wouldn't be sending another comforter, which we'll get to. Okay? If you had known me, what? You should have known my father also. Now, did he call himself God there? No. He laid, right there, he made it clear. He said, if you knew me, you'd know my father. Our father who art in heaven, not here on earth inside me. If you would have known me, you would have known my father. Go ahead. And from henceforth, ye know him, and have seen him. There it is. Now go ahead. Philip say unto him, Lord, show us the Father. Which means rabbi. So now Christians say, see, that means when they say seen him, that means that Jesus was the Father incarnate, right? Mm -hmm. That's not what Philip, but Philip said, okay. He looked right past Jesus and said, well, show him to us then. Then we see him. So they did not see Jesus as God. Read it again. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. 
And now watch how Jesus said, no, that means that if you show us the Father, we'll be satisfied. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. Therefore, you have seen the Father. And they said, okay, now, where is he? <laughs> they didn't see him as him. But watch what Jesus said now. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that that was a question, not a statement. <laughs> he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Why? And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Go ahead. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? And? The Father in me? Not I am the Father, and the Father is me? That I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The same light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He blew into man of his spirit, and man became a living soul. He created man in his image and after his likeness. Every man is endowed with the spirit of the Most High. When you see a righteous man, you see the spirit of the Father. When you see a righteous man, you see the spirit of the Holy Ghost. You see the manifestation of the Heavenly Father. Jesus ain't saying nothing unusual. When you see me, you see the Father, because when I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Go ahead. And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but... What he say? The words I speak to you, I don't speak of myself, but... The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Not Jesus. Jesus is not telling people to pray to him. Jesus is telling people that the Spirit of the Father is moving in him. It's his works. Jesus said, it's not my work. It's the works of the Father which is in him. In me. Please stop blaspheming the name of the Father by combining him with his Son. Go ahead. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. He repeats it. Or else believe me for the very work's sakes. Or oh, else just believe me by the miracles and signs that you see I've done. Go ahead. Verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, he yeah. that believeth on me, the works that I do, what? He do also. Does that mean that the Father will be working through them also? Yes. Yes, indeed. That's all it means. That you too can receive the Holy Spirit and become a son of God and do the works of the Father. You too. Go ahead. And greater works than these shall he do. Now, if Jesus is the heavenly Father himself, can any man do greater than the heavenly Father, I ask you? Yes no. or no? No. You can't do greater than the heavenly Father, right? That's well, right. he just said here that the disciples are going to do greater works than him. Well, if he is God, how can you do greater works than God? Impossible. Go ahead. Because I go unto my Father. I'm going to my Father, I'm not him. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. He didn't say, whatsoever you ask in my name, the Father will do. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do. Christians be saying something different. They be saying, if you ask in the name of Jesus, God will bless you. If you ask in the name of Jesus, Jesus will bless you as an angel, as a guide, as a spirit. But that's not the... We'll go ahead. <laughs> if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. 